So next we will uh, start with uh, different types of graphs. Before that, uh, if you see here, I will say about the structure. So if you see here, we already have some okay. kind of... Okay. <laughs> So before that, I will tell you about this structure. Like we have already some kind of folders and hierarchies here. But when you are connecting uh, with your, uh, so first time when you are connecting with your Excel or your other data sources file, you would not be finding any kind of folders or hierarchies. Okay. First, let me tell you what is a hierarchy. So hierarchy is nothing but you are going to uh, create a structural form of data which shows a categorical form of data which can be showing from the highest level of granular data to your lowest level of granular data. For example, if you are taking your time dimension. So in your time dimension, your highest level would be your year and your lowest level would be your day. Instead of making it separate like year, quarter and month and day, I am going to put all these into a dimension which forms as a hierarchy. Which one? Uh, no, I have that file locally saved in my machine. I will uh, send that files if you want. Uh, sample Superstore it's already available, right? Yeah, if I'm using any other files, I will. You can see the difference like when you are connecting to your any source files, you would be just having your dimensions and measures. It will not be classified into any kind of hierarchies or folders. Okay. Since it is a sample superstore with a safe data source, you could see all, already that it has been into some kind of folders and hierarchies. First, let me tell you if you want to group some uh, similar data items into a folder like customer related information, product related information. If you want, uh, want to put it into a folder, these are all for just to organize your data. In that cases, you can click on, if, in case if I want to put this customer name and segment into a folder, like same how we have in this uh, save data sources, you can click on the dimension, you would be having the small arrow. First, you have to put this by, instead of group by data source table, turn on this group by folder. And then click here, folders, create folder. You can give the name of the folder. And then you can drag the items you need to be inside that particular folder. So like this, you can organize your dimensions and measures into different folders. Since when you are uh, like when we are connecting with the data sets which has different kind of departments. So in that cases, if you are going to put it in a, if it is not structured in your database itself, so in Tableau you can actually make it as different folders. You can organize your items so that it would be easily for you to understand which data is coming from which kind of department. So if you want to put any of your values to folders, you can click on that particular dimensions or meshes, folder, add to folder. Or if you want to create a folder or you can add folder. If you want to remove it, you can either remove it by clicking here and you can remove it from your folder or else just simply drag it out of the folder. So this is with respect to folder. 
so we have something else here like these are called as the hierarchies this symbol where you have a hierarchy symbol so your hierarchy as i said you are going to form your data different types of fields related fields which is going to be forming like from highest level of grand value to your lowest level of grand value so for example if you see here i have my country and state city and postal code so you can form this as a hierarchy right so because these are all related item so for uh, you would, for a country you would be having multiple states for states you would be having multiple cities so cities would be again related to multiple postal codes so instead of keeping these items as a individual items i'm going to form it as a hierarchy so in order to create a hierarchy in tableau it's very easy just click on country and then your state hierarchy create hierarchy let this be location hierarchy so we have country state let me put city also and postal code so i have my country state city postal code this forms a hierarchy so now if i am going to place this country into my row or a column shelf i am getting a plus symbol here so if you click on this plus symbol it will take you to the next level of grand value that is your state again if you click it will be drilled down to your city again you would be able to drill down to your postal code so your country forms your highest level of grand value and your postal code forms your lowest level of grand value okay. order yeah order how you are forming your hierarchy again if you want to drill up you can click on this minus symbol city state country let's make one more hierarchy with this product name product hierarchy let me click here hierarchy create a hierarchy let me drag category sub category product name product id so i have my category sub category product name and product id so my highest level would be the category and my lowest level would be the product id so this forms a hierarchy mainly when you are dealing with your dimensional data you would be ending up with more number of hierarchies so if i see this order date field in if you have any kind of date field tableau automatically forms a hierarchy if you just drag your order date field into the column section itself you would be able to see the hierarchy that is your year quarter month and so date fields creates automatically its own hierarchy for other hierarchies you have to define your hierarchies based upon so hierarchies can be created only based on the related data items you cannot create a hierarchy based on unrelated data items i cannot put my uh, category and a ship date into a hierarchy it doesn't form a hierarchy they are not related only based on your related data item you would be able to form a hierarchy we call this as a dimension like a, a location dimension or a product dimension customer is also a dimension not a folder the dimension is folder type yes customer is just a folder it's not a dimension okay. in a folder you are having these two dimension customer name and segment if you want to remove your hierarchy then you can just click on this if you want to remove any of your particular fields from your hierarchy you can just click here and give remove from hierarchy or else just drag it outside the hierarchy if you want to remove the whole hierarchy also you can click here and remove the hierarchy one time it uh, one time it 
अनुकैन्या तत्व मेरा तो एग्जांपल Yeah. So one component can be on multiple hierarchy. For example, you are forming two dimensions, one related to customers, and then one related to segments. So in segments also you can classify the customers. So in customer hierarchy you may have just customer ID and customer name. So in segment you may have segment, customer name, and if you have some other related items you can form. So next let's see about this uh, one by one we can create about this visualization. So first thing we call it as a text tables or our cross tab. So your text okay anyway I will tell the definitions now later on you can refer to that PDF I showed now. So that would be in the PPT as well as uh, it would be there in that PDF. So if uh, the first thing is a text table. So text table is nothing but your, uh, we can also call it as a cross tab or a pivot table. It is like how you are representing your data in the form of a table. In your Excel or something you would be having a table, right? The same if you want to display or if you want to create a graph related to table, you can use this text table. So for example, let me take this product hierarchy. So it's just the table. See, it's not a graph, it's just your table. Where you have just have your dimensions and your related meshes. It is going to display in a form of a table. This is called your text tables. So for your text tables, you can also introduce totals. If you go to your analysis, you would be seeing something called total. So if you want to show your column grand total or a row grand total or a subtotals, then you can turn on your totals. Mainly your text table would not be used most. Maybe in some cases where you are representing one dashboard with different kind of visuals and another dashboard with the data. And you are creating some kind of interactivity between both the things. You, you want to see both the visuals as well as the figures. In that cases you may use these text tables or cross tabs. So next thing, uh, the same text table, if you are, uh, you have something called highlighted table also. Your highlighted table is uh, something which is going to create a table which has already have some kind of conditional coloring. For example, if I am taking this category and clicking on this highlighted table, if you see already I have some kind of conditional coloring has been applied to this table. So uh, you could see that I didn't put anything on the colors or something but since I clicked on this highlighted table so automatically it is uh, putting the sum of sales into the color so my highest sales is appearing in the darker color and the lowest sales with the lighter color. So the same text tables or your cross tab if you want to display with a kind of a conditional formatting, you can go for your highlighted tables. Your next type of graph is your heat maps. So heat maps will help you to analyze your dimensions and the meshes in the form of size of your measure, something which is going to represent in the form of symbols. So it, it, it will not be based on numerical figures, but it would be representing the same values in the form of symbols. So like uh, when I am uh, when I placed that uh, sum of sales into the size, right, so the bar size differed, right, previously when the example we discussed. So based on the sum of sales, my bar size got adjusted. Same thing when I am going to create this heat map, for example, uh, let me take this order date into the columns, category, subcategory. So I have my order date 
based on year and I have this category and subcategory. So your category and subcategory is nothing but the classification of your products. Okay, and let me pull this sales into the section. So now if I turn on this heat maps, see instead of numerical figures, you are getting it as B boxes. So you can also place your sales into the color section. Change it to some other color. Make it as three stepped colors. If you see your size of your box defines the value of your sales actually. So if you see here, uh, you can compare the category. So this one for the uh, furniture category, the chairs have the highest sales. So heat maps is helpful when you want to represent something in a form of a symbols. So the same symbols you can change it to different shapes also. In automatic if you go to shapes, so you can choose wide variety of shapes from here. You have more shapes. So you can choose whatever, in case if you are creating some kind of KPI dashboards, here if I have just pulled my uh, sales into that uh, section here. So in case if I am going to write some kind of calculated fields, so that my highest sale should show me the up arrow and my lowest sale should show me kind of a down arrow. Something similar to how we are forming up KPIs. In that case, these types of visualization would be more helpful. Let me come to this map section later. We can go for this pie chart. So your pie chart is most, uh, so in almost in most of your business dashboard, you could see a pie chart. So the most used chart or a graph would be your pie chart. Mainly when you want to show some kind of percentage of data or proportional data, in that cases, you would be going for this type of graph. That is your pie chart. So if I want to, if I have this category on sales, uh, let me click on this category and sales and click on the pie chart. So it shows me how much sales I have for each category. Let me put sales onto the label. So mainly when you want to uh, show some kind of proportional or percentage data in that cases your pie chart would be most useful. So next is your bar charts. So your bar charts can be represented in different ways. That is your horizontal bar chart, your vertical bar charts, stack bar charts and side by side bar charts. So first example we say the customer name and sum of sales. So this is your horizontal bar chart. If I swap the rows it would be my vertical bar charts. In case of stacked bars, your stacked bars is something where it adds up to 100 percentage like when you uh, so you should have at least let me take this category again category subcategory and some of six. take 
So this would be your stacked bar. So if you see, it, uh, I'm having both category and subcategory. But when I say, if I'm going to put this as a normal graph, I would be having like uh, three individual panes. That is my, based on each category, I would be getting my bars. If I'm putting it as a stacked bar, I'm just getting only three bars, which is being classified into different of subproducts. So your stack bar would be representing a bar which would add up to the total values of uh, like since I am having this category subcategory if you see my subcategory values would be totally displayed in this same bar. So this is your difference between your representing as a normal bars and your stack bars. When I'm having two meshes, when I'm having two meshes and if I want to, uh, so for if I take this subcategory, so in subcategory I have some products like uh, I have some kind of product classification. Let me take the sales and profit. So I have uh, one thing for sales and one thing for profit. Instead of displaying it like this, I want to display like side by side bars. So I can choose my side by side bars for if you see here for each of your subcategory it gives you both your profit and sales on the same axis. So your tree maps, so tree maps is something it is going to, for uh, let me take region. Let's see. What it is? And sales to the label section. Okay, 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 you can try it back. Uh, so now I am just telling about the basic types of charts. So we are going to use this basic types of charts with different like how to do a sorting or a filtering. So in that cases you can try. Now you can just observe like how to try uh, use these different types of charts. So this is your tree maps uh, because we have just two days if I want to cover most of the concepts in the two days, right? So you, this is like you're just seeing like how to create it. It's not like very complex issue. If you click on your uh, show me itself, it's going to come. But when you are, uh, when I'm creating a filter or something, that time if you try, you can remember it easily. This is not that complex. So your tree maps is like uh, based upon your measure. So it is going to put the areas would be allocated based upon your measures and it would be displaying as a whole, uh, like uh, if you see this is a whole bar that is being represented with four different regions. So we have like uh, west, east, south and central. So if you see the west has the highest number of seats. So this is a kind of a representation. We call this as tree maps. So this thing, the circles and uh, uh, circle views and side by side circles and all, it's same thing how you are creating your bar charts only. It is not the same side by side bars if I'm duplicating it and instead of bars, if I want to uh, display in the form of a circles, I can go for circles. It is just a view uh, whether you want to represent in a form of a bar or in the representation in the form of a circles. Next, let's move on to this line graphs. So, uh, 
see the same bar as I said here also you can change it to line you can display as a line graph but when what is the main concept of creating a line graph is your line graph is going to show you something over a period of time so when I am going to then what in that case only your line graph is would be more meaningful Instead of simply, if I am taking a dimension and measure, if I am going to represent it as a line graph, it's not that meaningful. So that can be represented with a bar graph itself. If I want to just compare a dimension and measure. The same dimensions and measure, if I want to compare it over a period of time, in that case is because you have to know why you are going for the line graph is, it is going to show you a trend. That is your, whether it is going upwards or downwards. If I am showing a sales information for a year, for a month of 12 months, you should know how my sales has been behaved over the 12 months. Maybe January you would have achieved a peak number of sales. February there may be some kind. So you are understanding the trend from your line charts. So always when you are going for a line or an area graph, if you are, uh, it's, now if you see in the show me without using your date field, it will not highlight this line or area graph. For example, if I am placing a dimension and a measure, you could not, see this is not even highlighted because it will not accept unless you have a date field. Let me drag this order date field here. See now your line graph has been highlighted. So that's how so your, the purpose of the line graph is like uh, because you may have ask a question why should not I create a line graph without using a date field. It's not mandatory. Because when you compare with the other business intelligence tool, you, will, you may not have something like this without a date field, you cannot create a line graph. So in Tableau also without a date field, you can represent your values in the form of a lines. But your actual purpose of your line graph would be based over a time period only. So that's why you should have a date field when you are creating either a line or your area charts. Either you can go for your continuous lines or you can go for your discrete lines. Okay. Um, so real time scenarios in the sense, uh, so when I'm, uh, so that's what I said to you, what is the difference between your discrete and your continuous, right? So here if you see when I'm just, uh, and also I, I didn't uh, show, tell you about one thing. Always if you see here, your uh, discrete fields would be in the blue color and your continuous fields would be in the green color. So when you are placing your year uh, dimension, that is your order date, right? So in order date itself, as I said, your in dimensions also you can have continuous fields. So uh, like if you have some kind of numerical fields or date fields. So if you see here, you have two boxes here, year, quarter, month, day. Same here also we have like year, quarter, month and week, day. So these would be your discrete fields. So it is just going to show you if I am representing for 2015, it is going to show me the value only belong to the 2015. But the same thing if I am go for the next section, these are would be, you could see here now it is in blue color. If I am changing it to this here, it is in green color. So when I am just uh, changing it to discrete and continuous fields, you could see when I am making it as discrete, it is just showing me the values that is my upward and downwards towards the sales correctly based on that year. It is not considering in between how many because I have more values in between my 2014 and 2015.
so when i am representing that graph it is not even taking considering about those values the values between my 2014 and 2015 so it is just concentrating on the four values because it is discrete when i am changing it to here you could see your line graph extends and you you here you have some kind of uh, lines which is floating between the values which you have between your 2014 and 2015 so now you got it like what is difference between this yeah. so area graph is similar your areas would be filled either you can go for your line graph or else if you want to show that particular whole area you can go for your area graphs so we uh, saw about that side by side bars right when you are representing two meshes same let me take this order date we take some of sales and some of profit so here uh, i'm having order date based on sum of sales one graph is showing me order date based on sum of sales and one is showing me order date based on sum of profit if you go here you have something called dual lines which would be represented with the same axis you can change it to dual lines so another way of creating your dual lines or your dual axis charts is let me duplicate the same thing so this is like normal a uh, line graph where you are not having as a dual lines so i have my year with sum of profit and sum of sales i have two axes here in a case if i want to make it as a same axis in that cases you can click on your second measure and you can click on the dual axis so this is respect to any types of chart if you want to create a dual axis chart you have to click on your second measure and you have to turn on your dual axis So when you turn on your dual axis, also you have like uh, see if you see for profit, we are having uh, some uh, values, and for uh, sales, I'm having like my starting and ending values. If I want to synchronize both the axes, you can click here and give synchronize axis. When I'm using same type of meshes with same types of values, my uh, axes are automatically synchronized. when i am using different meshes with different types of values in that cases if i want to go for a synchronize axis i can turn on this synchronize axis so these are called as you dual axis chart if, when you are going for line graph you can automatically turn on this dual line charts which will automatically create as a dual axis chart so when you are representing with your dual axis chart right so if you see on your uh, marks card you have three thing here one is for both that is your sum of profit and sum of sales so if you want to display same color for both the values you can if or else if you want to display two different colors you have your marks card section for separate of your meshes so in this cases i'm going to make one measure as a bar and let it be one be a line so this is one i have as a bar and one i have it as a line so you will be having when you are making us as a dual axis chart you may have for each measure you would be having a separate marks card so you can represent so i can either represent my uh, profit as bars or else i can uh, instead of profit let me make it this is as line and make the sum of sales as bar 
So one, you can represent each of your values. So this would be called as the combination of charts because you are using both your bar chart as well as your line chart. If you don't want to display this axis also, you can remove this show header option. So it would be as this, the only same axis. In case of synchronized axis, there is no need to show both your X and Y axis. In that case, you can remove that show header option. So it would be represented only with one axis. Then is your scatter plot. So your scatter plot is mainly created with two meshes. So in order to create your scatter plot, your main requirement is you should have at least two meshes. So let me take this profit, sum of profit into the columns and sum of sales into the rows. So when I take, so it gives me in the, in the scatter plot, it gives me the total value of my profit and sales. Why? Because my aggregate measures is being turned on. If I turn off this aggregate measures, I would be able to see based on individual profit and sales value instead of total sales. Or else if you are turning on your aggregate measures, if you want to compare with any other dimensions, that is if I want to compare my, uh, let me take this subcategory. So I want to compare my sales and profit of each of the subcategory. You can simply drag this to your detail section. I'm not using it in the part of a rows or column shelf. I'm just using it in the parts of the detail section. So if you see here now, for each subcategory, it shows me the profit and sales value. Why we call it as scatter plots? Because your, if you see here, values are scattered across your X and Y axis. So in this case, you have only your measure values as both your X axis and your Y axis. You are not referring any of your dimensions. Your dimensions is being referred only as the points inside your scatter plots. Your both your axis is referring only with your measure values. Next is your histograms. Your histograms, uh, so what is a histogram? So histograms are mainly a, a form of a bar chart, but it, is, it would be uh, helpful when you want to display your values in the form of a range of values or bucket of values. For example, if I have my sales value ranging from 0 to uh, 1 lakh of values, if I want it to split in the form of a ranges, maybe in the form of a 1000 or a 10,000, so like I want to know between the range of 0 to 5,000, what is my sales? 5,000 to 10,000 till I achieve my maximum of sales. I want to split it into different kind of ranges or buckets. In that case, your histogram would be helpful. So for histogram, you just simply drag a measure to your rows or column section and you can turn on your histograms. So it would automatically take your uh, sales bin. Uh, I will tell you what is a bin later. So if you, when you are creating your histograms, it automatically uh, put bins in the sense that collection of that range. So uh, if you see here, it automatically takes some kind of ranges. So between that ranges, it is displaying your count of sales values. You may understand it better when I tell about bins.
these uh, bubble charts, so packed bubbles is like how I've showed you the tree maps, right? If you duplicate the same thing and if you change it to bubbles, it would be represented in the form of a circles, similar to your tree maps. So based upon your measure, it will just allocate that particular size of the bubble. So this Gantt chart, box and whisker plots and bullet graphs, I will tell you later. Uh, so because those would be mostly understandable after we discussed about some kind of calculated fields or... Uh, so these are your, whatever I've created so far would be the basic types of visualizations. So basic types of graphs. So using this basic types of graphs, we would be creating many types of complex graphs. All the complex graphs or kind of advanced graphs the all would be using only this basic graphs. Like how I've created that, uh, there it is, dual axis chart. No? So this is a dual axis chart. So the same chart I'm going to represent in the form of a different base. But my base would be my basic types of visualizations. So I will show some of the advanced chart types tomorrow once we discussed about all the concepts. So as of now, these are the basic visualizations which we are going to use it in order to learn the other features of Tableau. I didn't say about maps. So in Tableau, you can also create your map visualizations. Uh, so we can create two types of maps, your symbol maps and your field maps. So in order to create your uh, map visualizations in Tableau, the main requirement is you should at least have one geographical field in your data source. Only if you have at least one geographical field in your data source, you would be able to create your map visualizations. And if you see, if you have at least one geographical field in your data source, in measure section you could see two things, that is your latitude generated and your longitude generated. So these two are already automatically generated fields by Tableau which would be having the generated field values with respect to that latitude and longitude values which would be helpful to plot your geographical fields into your maps. So in order to create your maps, so you can click on the any of your geographical fields and you can uh, use show me or else you can just double click on that particular geographical field. Once you double click, you automatically your latitude and longitude generated would be placed on your rows and columns. So if you see here, I have clicked, double clicked on the state map. So it is showing me the state and in the form of a symbol. So this we called as a symbol maps. Now I can put my sales into the size. So the symbols, the size of the symbol has been defined by the size of the measure. You could rep uh, see the legends over here. These are called legends. For each graph, the legends would be shown on your uh, right side. So either with the color coding or a size or anything. So I can just drag my state into the label section to display the state information on my map. This is called as symbol maps. On the right side you have a table, right? This is called legends. Same if I want to represent as a filled maps, double click on the state again and change it to field maps. Your, field, your symbol maps is represented in the form of a symbols. Your field maps is represented in the form of the area would be filled with the colors. You can put your state into the color so that each area would be filled with a different color. Also put state into the label and sales into the label.
same this symbol maps if i want to represent the symbols different symbols you can turn on the shapes and you can use different shapes or else if i want to represent a pi i want to represent a uh, pi in my maps let me duplicate the same map so i'm going to introduce one more dimension let me put the region into the colors and change it to pie chart okay region would not work let me put category into the color and change it to pie chart so instead of symbols you can represent it with type of a graphs also so for maps also we have lot of things to learn in tableau so as of now i have just told you how to create a basic field maps and a basic symbol maps still we have uh, something more to learn like uh, uh, it would be like a detailed chapter about maps itself like how to put your background maps how to turn on the different layers or in case if you are not having your latitude and longitude fields in your data source itself you are having it in a separate uh, file and how to bring it into your tableau using a custom geo coding or what all the other options you have so those things and all it would be like a very detailed section that we will see it later so as of now in this uh, worksheets i have created all the basic visualization which we are going to refer it in the further uh, sections like how to use other features with the tab so now i am going to save this workbook so when i am saving this workbook i have two file types that is dot twb so i have two file types that is my .dwb tableau workbook and .dwbx tableau packaged workbook when i am going to save it with .dwb one only my layout that is my the layout would be just stored but not my underlying data okay but when i am going to save the same file as .dwbx is my tableau package workbook it is going to save as a package workbook with all the information whether you are importing some kind of custom shapes or custom geo coding files or your underlying data would also be captured so when i am using uh, saving it with twb and if i am going to open it in the same machine uh, or a twbx it does not matter to me actually because i i would be uh, so it would automatically point to my underlying data or when i but when i'm going to share it with you in that case is in your twb file will not contain your underlying data you may not open that file without having the proper data source for example i may refer one data source i cannot send you so if i if i have a database information i'm creating my reports right for i cannot send my database also until uh, before publishing to the server i'm saying i mean i cannot send the, my database also to the person whom i'm sending the file So in that cases, TWB would not be helpful. Mainly, when you want to share the workbooks, you have to go for .twbx. So when you are sharing it, so when you are using your custom reference files also, when I am saving it with .twbx and if I am sending to you, I don't need that send to that file because that part of the file would be already saved in your in memory. So it would be uh, going to be part of that packaged workbook. So it is always the best you have to save with .twbx.
So any question so far with respect to this basic visualization? <coughs> ah, histogram you will understand better when I am telling about bins. So histograms will, uh, like it would be uh, uh, put in your continuous measure fields into different form of ranges or different form of buckets. It is going to split your values into different form of buckets. So it is helpful to analyze that own measure. Uh, so that's why I said, so when I'm having the sales, right? So when I'm having the sales information starts with zero to, I may have till 20,000 or something. So if I want to analyze the sales, like count of sales between um, if 0 to 1000, what is my total sales? So I'm going to split it into various buckets. So we, we have something called bins in Tableau. So that is also helpful to create, uh, split your data into... Uh, bins is a term which is which we would be creating in Tableau itself. When you keep that uh, sales, right? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, that's why I said when you uh, when you click uh, when you create, I will show you. I will take a fresh sheet. When I'm taking this sum of sales here, right? When I turn on the histograms, automatically a bin would be created. So now you can actually work along with me, like we are going to discuss about how to uh, do sorting, filtering, so those things. So first thing, let's sort, let's uh, know about how to do sorting with respect to Tableau. So let me, uh, let's create a visualization with customer names and sales. So you have two types of sorting in Tableau. One would be your computed sorting, one would be your manual sorting. So your computed sorting is directly applied on the axis using the, like whether you can sort it uh, based on the measure or something. Manual sorting is, it has been sorting based on the dimension, so you are going to define the order. Uh, so for example, now we have taken right this customer name and sum of sales. So this customer name sum of sales, if I want to sort it, the options in Tableau are, if you click on the measure, you would be getting a small sort icon over here. So you can either sort ascending or descending. Or else by default, it would be in your data sort order. So you can click on your ascending. Or else here also you have this sorting option. Let me change it back to data source order. So here also you have either for a sort descending or a sort descending. All your computed sortings. These are all comp what we are doing is computed sorting. Everything is based upon the measure. Based upon your measure values or only these sortings have been happening. So one more thing is you can click on your dimensions. Either you can use this option or else you can use this option. Or else if you want to sort your uh, measure values based on some kind of aggregation, you can click on your customer name and go for sort. So either you can choose ascending or descending and go by field, sum of sales and you can choose the aggregation. Either if I want to go by average of sales or median of sales or count of sales and give OK. So my values would be sorted based on that particular aggregation. So either you can use this option or the option which is in the toolbar or you can click on your dimensions. Here you don't have, like here, if you click on your measures, you will not have be having any kind of sort information. You have to sort your measures based on your dimensions. 
So click on the dimension, go for the sort option and you can choose the field and give the aggregation and give OK. So these are all computed sortings. If I want to go for a manual sorting, let me duplicate the same sheet. Manual sorting is based on your dimension. So if I have something like I want some uh, this customer to be on the top, this customer to be on the bottom. So you have to go for your sort option and go for your manual sorting. So you decide like which customer needs to be on the top and which customer needs to be on the bottom. So you manually sort your dimension values. It's not based on a measure. For example, if I want this Christopher to be on the top. And the person who is having this highest sales would be on the middle. So this is some kind of a manual sorting where it, only this sorting is based on your dimensions where you can manually sort it. So when you are having two dimensions or when you are having hierarchical data, in that case is how you will sort it. In that case is if you click on that particular first dimension and you have something called sort option. So you can sort individual. This is also one option. So either you can make one category as in the descending order and one category in the ascending order. When you have like multiple dimensions which is unrelated, for example, let me take this region and ship mode and profit. So this is something which is unrelated but I want to sort it based on these two dimensions. Okay, in that case is you can go for two ways. One is your combined fields and another one is your rank. First let me tell you about combined fields. So I have this region and ship mode. So what I am going to do is I am going to combine these two fields. So click on the region and ship mode. Click on both the dimensions and click on the down arrow and create your combined field. Now I am going to place this combined field in between my region and ship mode and I am going to sort it based on my profit, sum of profit, descending and give OK. 
So now if you see everything has been sorted in the same descending order. So now you can actually remove, uh, I mean, uh, hide this field. You can click here and remove this show header and also include in tooltip and also you can format your grid lines. You don't have, you could not see any instance like you have used one more field for your sorting. This is one way of uh, doing uh, sorting your fields when you are using multiple dimensions. In another way is using the rank. So uh, that I will tell you after we discuss about the calculations. So these are all the sorting options available in Tableau to sort your data. Shall we move to next topic? So next we are going to see about filters, how to create filters in Tableau. So filters are mainly to uh, create a restriction over your data. So instead like uh, where uh, if I am having your, your dimensions, if I want to like I don't want to display all the four years in my uh, graph. I just want to select it based on where either I want to give a user input or a developer input when I am creating the gap. If I want to see only data related to 2011 or data related to the current year like this. So you are going to put some kind of restriction over on your data. In that case is only we are going for creating these filters. So in Tableau we have various types of filters. Let's see one by one. So the first is your basic So first would be your basic uh, filters or we also call it as normal filters. So we have three types of basic or normal filters. So first one would be your filters based on dimension and then filters based on measure and then filter based on date call. I think this connection is lost. So let's discuss about these three types of filter. That is your filter based on dimension, filter based on measure, and filter based on date call. So you can take any dimensions and measures. Just don't use the same dimension measures which I am using. You can put your own dimensions and measures also.
So now we are going to create our first filter that is our filter based on dimension. Okay. So you have to, I have used subcategory and sum of sales. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a filter. This is called as filter shelf. So I'm going to drag my subcategory into the filter shelf. So once, so this, once you drag your subcategory into the filter shelf, you have this filter window that has been opened. So either you can go by select from list or the custom value list or you can go for use all. I will tell about these tabs later. First, let's concentrate on the general tab. So I'm going to select none and I will be selecting only few things from here which I actually want to display in my graph. Instead of displaying all the values, I'm going to display only few values and give it OK. So that's why I said filter is something you're going to put restriction on your data. So if you want to include or if you want to exclude any of your data, you can again click on the filter and go for edit filter. And if I want to add one more values, I can give it OK. So every time Instead of going to going here and editing my filter, I have some option called show or quick filter. So now it is called a show filter, but if you refer like previous versions in your nine or something, it is referred as quick filters. So uh, when somebody is asking you what is quick filter, they are actually referring to this show filter. So if you give show filter, you would be having your filter window that has been displaying on the right side of your graph. So in this case, you don't want to go and edit your filter every time. From here itself, either you can select or deselect your values. This we also call it as interactive filters. So here in this, I'm creating I have created my filters based on a dimension. I can add n number of filters if I want to uh, create a filter based on category also. So you can change the order of the filters. So in this filters that has been displaying, you have some kind of options. So if you click here, so you can either display as a single value list or a multiple value. Either you can go for the single value. In case of single value, you would be able to select only one value. Else, these are the display options. When you go for the single value, you can either display as a list or as a drop down or as a slider. So you have three display options when you are going for a single value. Else if I am going for multiple value, you can either go by list or go by drop down or you can go by custom list. Custom list in the sense if I want uh, like starts with F, if I give this letter and give F, all the things which has F would be coming over here. Also you have wildcard match, if you have some kind of wildcard characters or uh, starts with contains, if you want to use those types of things into your filters, you can go for your wildcard match. If you want to remove your filter, you can just drag it outside the window or else click here and give remove filter. Or else if you want to clear the values in the filter, you can give clear filter. So 
So this is your filter based on dimension. Let me duplicate it. Let me remove all these filters. So now we are going to create a filter based on measure. So I'm going to drag my measure into the filter section. So just drag the sum of sales into the filters. So when you are dragging your measure into the filter section, again you would be getting like what type of aggregation you want to choose. Either you want to go by sum or average or count median. So you have to choose here. And again give next. Here you have four tabs. First thing is your range of values. Since you are using a continuous measure, you can choose the range of values that is your from and to values. If I want to display the sub category that is subcategory between sales between like 10,000 to 50,000. So I'm going to give the range of values that is my from value and my to value. So you can just use this slider option. So I want to display between it would be 70 around 70 and around 2 lakhs. And just give OK. So you are defining, you want to display the products that is having the sales between uh, uh, starting from 10,000 to 2 lakhs. So in range of values, you are defining your from values and your to values. And if you go for at least is something like sum of sales greater than sum value. You are defining some kind of threshold value. That is you want to display the subcategory of products only when it is greater than 1 lakh. Same when you are going for at most is something like sum of sales lesser than sum value. So your from values is between, your range of values is between, your at least is greater than and your at most would be lesser than. So you can choose your end value, lesser than 1,50,000 or something. And your last tab is for including your null or non-null values. In case if you have your null values in your columns, in that case whether you want to include your null values or you don't want to include your null. Either you can go by null values or non-null values or all values. All values will include all the null values. Next is your filter based on dates. So you can have one date column in your column section. And you have to drag your date into the filters. So when you are going to drag your date into the filter, so you can either choose as a relative dates or range of dates or else only based on a year or a quarter or based on both year and the month or based on all the three year, day and a month. Or else you can go by aggregation also like count of dates, minimum of dates, maximum of dates. First, if you choose your relative dates, your relative dates are something like uh, something specific to a particular day. Like today or yesterday or last year or previous year, uh, last quarter, last month, something based on a fixed. So related is something based on a fixed. So if I am choosing like yesterday or today or tomorrow or last three months, so your relative dates is something specific to particular days. Or else 
you can go for your range of dates again your range of dates is similar how we discussed in measure that is you are going to decide both your start date and your end date so i want to specify uh, the uh, sum of sales value between 2014 january to december 15 2015 december or else you can go by starting date that is order date greater than your start date alone or else you can go by end date order date less than your end date same the special is for including your null or non null dates in case if i want to display only the year i don't want it based on uh, let me change it to this craft and remove the picture. i want to display only based on the year not based on the all the three values year day and month i can go by years itself choose on the year give next you would be just getting at your normal filters so you can choose like 2012 you want to display data only with respect to 2012 2013 or else if you want both year and the month then again you can choose year and month you would be having both your year values as well as your month values so these three or your normal or basic filters that is your filter based on dimension measure and date so these are the basic or normal filters still we have lot more types of filters we can discuss it after lunch also
So any question on each, each and everything? Anybody have any question or clarification? Any doubts? Anything? Anybody want to look at any of these topics? Uh, maybe it's, uh, because with this we have to make this, uh, we have to do a decision making or uh, drawing conclusion. So, uh, even now all these technologies are now uh, known. Now, uh, in the later sessions, so is it going to be use based, use case based, analyzing the, uh, analyzing the data? So, we have so many hundreds of data sets. From the data sets, different Excel sheets, we have to connect to SQL server data. Tables or similar ways, market minus database to connect. From there, we do the patient analysis. Okay, and now still this whole day we have to understand the new terminology, what are the options we have, uh, those things, the first operation and the second operation is where we are at that day. Gradually, we go into patient making, and tomorrow we will be able to create many, many dashboards. So, dashboards are very important in the tableau. What are the ways we can create multiple? Because in our organization, we create more into dashboards. So through the dashboards, we go into the decision making analysis. And then we will take a look at our So there are use cases to be taken. Okay. Any questions? Any doubts? These are all basics of your reporting. If you want to create your final report, you have to know what you have to put into your reports. From your report only, you are going for your decision making process. First, you know like how to create your report. So first, uh, when you are having your data, you know you, you should be knowing like how to represent your data. From that data only, we are going to go for your business decision making. So this is like how to create your reports with respect to data. Yeah. Uh, so what I probably is that first is any use case based approach learning is very good. Most normalizable thing. For example, uh, uh, some subcategories is there. So if we have the uh, all these categories, you know, because it's all known categories, I mean everybody is in a shopping cart or something. So this is how uh, this, this graph is okay. used. Um, I'll, I'll give you that. So in another option, we have a blue track. In that, we have all the examples of the use case instructions. I'll show you that. From that, we'll give that some examples. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, when you are choosing this filter, you have to choose month and year. You can either choose month and year or you can choose month, day and year. Okay, good. Go for lunch? Good. Now go for lunch and stay good. No? Keep the lab of advantages. Good. And people are fasting.